So first I tape this like that on the back. Then I'm going to trace it against the window so you can kind of see the tracing coming through already. So I printed out my tracing. Hi! <laughs> I printed out my tracing and now I'm going to put it on the window and we'll see what we get. Hey you guys, so before we get started on this painting, I want to actually talk you through some of my thoughts about composition about this picture and why I really thought it was good. What I really liked is there's this bridge over here and I, help, I think that if we emphasize this bridge more than it is in the picture, it will help lead the eye in and the eye will come to these boats very naturally because they're going to have a lot of detail and then this white area of uh, light on the water will help the eye go back up through the painting back to the bridge and around so it'll keep I think the picture already has a pretty nice natural composition to keep the viewers eye in the painting and that's half the battle is to start with a picture that already has a fairly good composition starting out now another thing that I want to think about are these boats when I started tracing this image I spent so much time uh, just on the tracing because the details in these boats are tiny and unless you're going to paint larger than 11 by 14 for example I'm going to do 16 by 20 it's going to be really hard to get all the details and that's okay that's part of being an artist is deciding what details you're going to leave in and what details are important and for me the most important things about these boats are the general shapes and I'm painting 16 by 20 so I will be able to get more be able to get a little bit more detail and my plan for these boats is to make this one red to help view uh, pull the eye into the painting because of all this green I think it needs some red anyway to balance it out and then I'm going to use masking on the tops of each of these boats just to define the boat shapes a little bit and then really pay attention to a couple key elements in the boat shapes like this little shape right here on the back of this boat I think is an interesting shape so I'm going to make sure I save that with masking. This triangle of this boat I think is really a nice shape and this curve is a really good shape and then just a few lines of masking to save some of these uh, just general shapes of the boats. I'm going to put some details in this boat and mask along the edge of this boat I think same with the edge of this boat. I'm going to use masking and also use masking to put in a few little details. And remember, if you guys watched my horse painting video about jewelry, this picture naturally already has some great jewelry in it. You just need to pay attention to it. And some of that jewelry is going to be these little details on these boats, these little things that are sticking up. I don't even know what they are, but like the little details in here on the boats is really going to help uh, it's going to really help move the viewer's eye to the boats and keep them interested in those boats and keep it looking interesting. Now, I think the most challenging thing to this painting is going to be this area. And in my tracing, I tried to create some shapes of some uh, trees that aren't in this picture, but I'm going to put a few trees that are maybe yellow or orangish, almost as if it's fall, just to break up some of this green. But I did a little bit of a color study on my in a digital painting just to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with all this blob of um, tree. And I want to get it nice and splashy. I want to try that. And I think I need to keep these leaves pretty light in tone. And then I'm going to use this dark under layer of the underbrush to kind of pull this together in this line that goes along the underbrush of these trees and shrubs in the background to help delineate this part of the landscape which is more um, coming towards us. So I'm trying to create some layers <coughs> of trees in the painting and I'll probably keep this area pretty um, yellow green and bright and 
put in some interesting tree shapes back here and then keep these trees pretty light. I'm gonna keep the bark pretty light on them. And I wanna splash some masking all in through here. I'm gonna take the trees that, just, that are covering this bridge and pull them back so we can see more of the bridge to help pull the viewer's eye into the painting that way. And then I'll probably do a little bit of masking, maybe even get some of these circles going. I think those are neat and mask some of those out just to add some jewelry and some interest. And if I don't like them, I can erase them out later, but I think that would be a fun thing to do at the very beginning is to mask some of these circles where there's a little bit of rain falling on the water. So uh, this is not a simple painting to do, but what helps is that it already has a nice composition already um, in the original photograph that'll I think will help. I'm gonna take out these red tires. I, th I think they're confusing and um, I don't know what those are anyway. So I'm gonna take those out and I'm gonna to try to play up these fence posts too to help the eye move through the painting. If you guys notice there's fence posts, I think that'll make a nice little jewelry addition as well to really make the painting pop. And then splatter some masking, like I said, in the trees, and then try to have different colored trees back here to create another layer of depth. So that's what I'm thinking from here on out, and we'll see how this goes. Okay, you guys, so here we are. I just wanted to show you a mistake I made already. I used this charcoal pencil to do my transfer onto my watercolor paper, and I have footage of me tracing on the window, and I was using this charcoal pencil. Don't do that, because when you paint with uh, the charcoal pencil underneath, it's gonna spread around and muddy the waters, so to speak. So you should use a um, hardness of two or more for your drawing, your underlying drawing when you're doing a transfer. So just note to you. So what I did is I did this transfer with this very loose charcoal pencil and I went back in and I erased most of it with an eraser and you can use a kneaded eraser that's probably best to pick up extra charcoal off your paper if you make the same mistake. So um, <clears throat> now I am ready to do my masking. I have a new toy and I forget what this is called, but I will link it below and I'll probably make a little text note for you guys in the video. But uh, it wasn't an expensive tool. I think it was like under $10 and you just dip it like a quill pen in the masking and you can make this tip smaller like so. You can make the tip smaller or wider. Here I'm making it wider depending on how wide you want your line. But a lot of people have reviewed these on YouTube and said they are a game changer. So of course I was like, well, I've got to share this with my Patreons and my students and see if they like it and see if I like it. So I'm going to try it to do some of the masking on this piece. And without further ado, shall we get started? All right, so I'm going to pull up my reference photo on my Actually, I've got it right here. So maybe I'll just look at the hard copy. I'll do it the old-fashioned way. <coughs> but I'm going to go in. I've got my masking. Of course, you guys have seen this before. You always make sure you get removable masking. They do make permanent masking that doesn't come up off your paper. But I always put the masking on at the beginning of the painting. What you may not know is that you can paint a, a watercolor let it dry and then put masking over that if there's um, if you want to save that area and then do something really loose around it and then when you go to remove the masking it will not hurt the underlying paint layer just FYI if you were ever wondering that so you just simply leave the masking on your watercolor paper until 
you get the painting to a stage where it's safe to take the masking off and you don't need the masking to keep your paper white anymore, usually towards the end. All right, I've tried this masking fluid once already and it was a bit of a learning curve. I wasn't sure what I thought about it. <coughs> but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try it. But I've also got my rigger and my soap. And you know what I do, I get my rigger wet and I scrub it around in the soap and then I use my rigger to apply the masking. So I have that as a backup. But I'm just gonna dip in so I have a little bit of masking and that made a big old blob okay masking will come out of it let me get more masking in my pen shake out the excess. Let's see if that'll make it better. It's kind of drying out. It's kind of getting stringy. I don't know if that's because of my masking is a little old or I don't know. I think I just need to some of these beautiful rings. I really do love all these little delicate rings, but they're quite tedious to paint. it'll really pay off if you 
take the time to paint some of these little ring drops from little little fallen drops of rainwater. Okay, I'm gonna rinse out my liner. Don't want it to get too some more soap on it. Lots of water and lots of soap. these little dots of light and these otherwise dark watery shadows is going to really pay off. I know it's tedious. But this is what I talk about when I talk about jewelry. It really makes a painting come alive get the jewelry in you guys sorry <laughs> it really will help your painting though And rinsing my brush, getting more soap. And I'm gonna put some jewelry on, especially these boats here. It's really gonna pay off if you do it. I promise. Get these little details in you guys. You're gonna look good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. These little tiny details is where it's at. You know the saying, the devil's in the details. True story, y'all. The finer you can get. Ah, I made a big blah blah. The finer you can get these little details, the more impressive your painting's going to be. If you get little hairline glints of sun along the edges of this boat that's in the very foreground, look at that little thin line of light. If you can get that, your painting is really going to be impressive, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure. 
You're not going to want to miss those pretty details. Okay, I'll stop sounding like a weirdo. But I'm just saying, please. Don't forget to mask in your jewelry at this point for this particular painting. Now is the time to mask in the jewelry. It really will add so much to this painting. Now I want to make sure I get this line right. hard to see with this clear mask and they do make mask with green in it that may help you see what the heck you're doing because honestly I cannot see what the heck I'm doing either I'm just like putting on my mask and hoping for the best in some instances <laughs> Now, in the foreground here, there's some plants. I'm just going to put in a few leaves just to denote that texture. getting my brush very full of mask just so I can put blob 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 down right here for to suggest leaves basically doing it pretty rough I'm sure later I'll wish that I would have paid more attention to these little details I might end up doing some negative painting in here, so we'll see how I end up doing this area. Put in some little calligraphic, calligraphic lines to just suggest stems coming up. That one got a little rough. Okay, I need to rinse out my liner. I'm very afraid of getting this liner messed up because I really do like it. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna splatter some here too. I'm just getting my brush very full of water, tapping off the biggest blobs and then going doink, doink, doink. And I'm gonna do that in the water to suggest some very beautiful little sparkles on the water. It's gonna really look pretty. 
already looks pretty. And then I'm gonna go and draw, suggest some branches back in here. dark trees in here but this tree right here has some moss on it so I'm gonna try to emulate that by just scrubbing the side of my rigger along the trunk of this tree and also tree back here. I'm just gonna, I can always darken that later if I decide it needs to be a lot darker. But I'm just gonna paint in some random br uh, branches. Coming down through here. And then I'm going to splash some leaves in here. I wonder what would happen if I just kind of squash those. That'll be an experiment, you guys, because I don't know what that's going to look like. I just smushed a bunch of little, I'm trying to get a kind of more of a leafy texture instead of the round texture. So I'm just kind of smushing some of these. I don't know. I don't know if that'll turn out right. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you don't want to be brave and try something new. I'm always trying new things. And this is a landscape. This is not exactly what I'm known for. So, you know, if I mess it up, that's okay. I'm learning. I am learning right along with you guys. So I'm just going to put in some splashes of leaves, some, some heavier than in others. Right here I want, and I'm getting masking, everywhere. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna see what we got. I've been doing this for a half hour. You guys are probably tired. <coughs> Gonna smush. smush. I don't want these perfect little circles for the most part. Maybe a few, but some of these I want these to look like leaves in here. All right. Hopefully I won't regret that. All right.